Yeah? Yeah. We back? I think we're back. I think we're back. Okay, cool. Um, as you can see, backdrop. I was super stoked about the backdrop. Um, was trying to frame it out so it's just the green. And then I thought it was like super hiker trashy to actually see the full sleeping mat so you guys actually know what we're using as a backdrop. A little bit of a preview of the gear thing. We're still yeah. waiting for UPS to drop off like his stuff, so. We shouldn't touch on the UPS stuff. Should we it, start over? No, I, I like that. <laughs> I'm just playing that it will make me super frustrated. All hikers know the problems with UPS, USPS, FedEx. It's a pain in the ass having to get gear mailed to places that you don't live because everything goes wrong most of the time. I mean, I think you get more frustrated by this. I do. Yay. Recording? It is recording. Stay. Stay camera. It's like precariously balanced. It's gonna probably fall over at some point. I mean, yeah. But I think it looks good. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. So you want me to start? You wanna start? You can start. Okay, so we're back. Um, as we said, we're gonna do a little bit of pre-trail videos for the NCT because since it's the biggest national scenic trail, I thought it would be cool to kind of show you what's a little the same and what's a little different as we go through planning because we've both done so many trails that most of the time the planning's pretty straightforward. Yeah, if you're on a trail that's got a gut hook app, just use that. It's super simple. It's gonna give you most of the information that you're gonna need. Yeah. I really wish this trail had a gut hook actually because um. <laughs> I personally really enjoy knowing exactly how far I am to the next water source, the next town stop. That is nice. But for this trail, we're going to be using a combination of either Avenza or Gaia maps. I don't think we've decided yet. A little bit of both, probably. A little bit of both. Yeah. Um, which means that in order to see your next waypoint, you actually have to measure it, and it's a little bit time consuming. But yeah, and measuring it, I know you like to measure it more. Um, with Avenza and Gaia, you can accurately measure it, but that's more frustrating to me than just ballparking it. Yeah. And that's not recommended. If you're doing these maps and you really get dehydrated super quick, you should completely measure where that water source is. But if you're comfortable saying, hey, it's in anywhere from five to 10 miles, that's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. So number one, for most trails that you're probably going to be doing, mm -hmm. got hook. Yes. Number two, these kinds of trails that aren't as popular, Avenza and Gaia maps are both good resources for you. Yeah. And a little bit of the difference is the gut hook app, um, it has its perks, but it also has its downfalls, but I'm not going to get super into that. But what it does provide is the comments on water sources. Yeah, so really that's, useful. Yeah, that's a big difference with the map systems we'll be using is you can see that there's a water source. There's no icon that says water. Hey, here's a bubble of water. You can see it's a water source, but you don't necessarily know how legitimate, how accurate these maps are, stuff like that. If it's seasonal, if it's running, if it's clean, if it's polluted, yeah. if it's a spring, you don't know what the access is like. So we might encounter, like on the VIT, we would be like, oh, there's a water source coming up and then we'd get there and it's like a bridge that's completely <laughs> inaccessible. You can't get down to the water without taking some significant time out of your day. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's a slightly inconvenient thing about the NCT maps, but yeah. Overall, for a trail that's 4,600 miles long, the map systems are there. You just have to do a little detective work to find them. And you'll probably be carrying more water than if you were using a map system that told you ex exactly about the water. Yeah. So that's one of the little kind of hurdles that we get over. Um, we've both done map systems and trails like that before. So <clears throat> once you get into the feel of it, you'll probably end up carrying more water. That's the gist of it. Um, you shouldn't always rely if you see a blue line across the map because as Magpie said. It might not be there or yeah. it might not be accessible. But we're getting into the weeds a little bit. Tell them about how you found the maps for the NCT. Yes, so something I did want to do is let you all know that the northcountrytrail.org, their website for the Trail Association, has a beautiful interactive map that shows the entirety of the trail system. You can zoom in, you can see segments of half a mile long to 10 miles. It's broken into a, thousands of little segments. But as a full interactive map, you cannot use that on the ground. You can pull it up on your phone and be like, oh, I might be here, but it's not gonna ping your location or it's not gonna show you if there's a road that turns off three or four directions, it's not gonna show you. You could probably guess from like zooming in on that map, but it's gonna make it more difficult when you're on the ground traveling. And their interactive map is not downloadable. So you have to not. have connectivity in order to look at it. Yes. So. So it makes that more difficult. Mm -hmm. Great interactive map. and. 
yeah, go look at that, northcountrytrail.org, um, for a broader overview. But if you're trying to pull the maps, you're going to have to kind of do a lot of Google playing. Um, Google. <laughs> um, <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to do a lot of Google playing, and um, you'll find eventually a couple links that will bring you, and I'll put it in the description, the actual website, that will bring you to a downloadable version of the GPX tracks that are providable. Yeah. So on the NCT website, they do provide a bunch of links to Avenza maps broken down by section. Um, yeah. Some of these are really useful, but it's not a complete picture of the trail. So you're going to have to do a little bit of looking. So the Finger Lakes Trail Association and the Superior Hiking Trail Association um, both provide full coverage maps of those trails. And that's something that the NCT uses because it goes right across the Finger Lakes Trail and it does the entirety of the Superior Hiking Trail. Yes. So you can get really good high quality uh, GPX data for both of those trails with a small donation to either one of those. Yes. Um, and then the rest of it I think you found on the NCT website? Besides the Buckeye. Besides the Buckeye Trail. The Buckeye is the same boat that she was talking about. You can go through the Buckeye Trail Association and pay them or Yay, gut hook has it. Yeah, gay, good. <laughs> Thank God. Yay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's your preference, whatever you want to use. Um, I start leaning away from gut hook. I talked about gut hook on the New England Trail, and it, there's a little frustration in there, but it's super practical and good for the most part. Yeah. So yeah, the Buckeye has that, and also currently on the map source, that interactive map, as well as all the GPX data, the route ends in Vermont at Middle of Nowhere Road. So this middle of nowhere road is not actually where they're wanting to build trail to. They want to build trail as the eastern terminus at the main junction of the Appalachian Trail and Long Trail, where the AT splits off from the Long Trail. So instead of getting dropped off on that middle of nowhere road, we're going to go to main junction, which is, according to the NCT, where they're starting the eastern terminus. It's just they have not maybe gotten the correct rights to use that map or they're not allowed it's to blaze it. It's not finalized it. yet. Yeah, so. But that's going to be the official beginning and so that's where we're going to start. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so currently, yeah, it ends in the middle of Nowhere Road. Um, you'll have to piece together and it's super easy. You just hit Main Junction, follow it up northbound for a little bit, and then you connect to the route that is currently on the GPX file. So that's the official route as of 2021 and that's the one we'll be hitting. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the basis of the overview of how to get the map situated. Um, but we could also touch on that we're gonna be GPSing it. So we're gonna to have to ping it as well. Yeah, so we're gonna be making a new GPS track for this using our Garmin. You didn't grab the bag of chips? I thought we were using the chips to do it. I mean, the chips are important as part of it fuel. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I thought this was the GPS. I mean, I don't know if it'll tell us where to go, but it is tasty. Oh, chips always tell me where to go. They okay. tell me a special place in my heart. I keep interrupting you. Can you, you can go on? <laughs> I don't know. That was the end of my sentence. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, That's okay. Uh, so we're going to be using this guy to create a GPS route on fastest known time. Yes. Um, so uh, hopefully after we've done this trail, it's going to be easier for you guys to find a GPX route, at least with waypoints. Yes. Um, you know, it's... One of these, if you're bringing it along with you, I almost never use the Garmin as an actual mapping tool. It's more useful for that if you're doing something like biological or geological field research or wanting to track your waypoints across a wilderness area that doesn't have any kind of map or route through it. Yeah. Um, the screens on these guys are pretty small and mostly what they're just useful for is as a communication device and as a tracker. Yes. But if you want to, you can use one of these handhelds as your map. I just wouldn't use it as a primary map because it's not particularly user-friendly and it's also really irritating to try to load these with yeah. the route. It's just- No way, you're spending hours. <laughs> it's computer programs and fussing around with data and it's just yeah. not worth your time. Just yeah. put it on your phone, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. so on that tangent, we have officially submitted the route to fastest known time um that they didn't have the north country and the entirety route system so we submitted that map system that we pieced together from those gpx files um and currently that map system when you go there it doesn't have the buckeye it doesn't have the finger lakes and it doesn't have a superior hiking trail because like i said those rights to those map systems are from the trail association so when we go through there we'll be able to use that but they want you to still donate or do another we want it to be respectful of the trail associations yeah. and not put that in there to 
you'll be able to access it and see it. Like I said, it's fully on the interactive map, but yeah, go to North, Con I'm rambling, go to North Country um, Trail on Fastest Known Time, and you'll see that we announced our start date, our intentions, um, all the stuff that you need to kind of know about following us along throughout that, as well as once we start, we'll include the link of this on the YouTube channel, as well as Fastest Known Time. Yep. And it'll show you kind of as we go along, um, it'll show our pace too. Yeah, well, uh -oh. it's all now for slow. Uh-oh, <laughs> it's gonna be pushing me hard. Oh, I can see this being a little rough some days, <laughs> <laughs> going four, four and a halfers. Um, the other thing that we wanted to talk about with maps is kind of as an overview for hikers who aren't doing anything like this specific trail is the way that you use your map system to locate yourself in space. So yeah. this is something that you're going to get better at with practice. But one thing that I always advocate that people do, no matter what kind of mapping software that you're using, whether it's a GPS, Guthook, Gaia, Avenza, Whenever you take a break in the morning before you leave a trail town, whenever you've got a little bit of time to spend looking at your phone or looking at your map, look well ahead of where you anticipate going. So especially if you're using gut hook, don't just follow the red line and keep it zoomed in to the next two, three miles. Look ahead, get an idea of what direction you're heading in. Think about, am I moving northwest? Is the trail going to be taking a sudden turn to the south for some reason? Like, where am I going generally? This is helpful not only for planning your water stops and your break spots so that you can maybe get a good break with a view or thinking about where you're going to camp, but also if your phone breaks, if you get lost, if you find yourself disoriented, or if you encounter a confusing intersection with multiple branches, bad trail signage, you can think roughly, well, I know I'm supposed to be going generally northwest. That trail or that road isn't going to take me the direction that I want to go. And you can usually use your common sense to make a choice in that moment and double check it against the maps where you are. This means that you're not going to be spending as much time waiting for your location to update or load. If your GPS satellite is blocked by cloud cover, you can keep in your mind an idea of where you are because you know where that intersection is coming up. And so you can kind of guess at where you're going, especially if you have an idea of your pace. Yeah, I yeah. completely agree with that. And it's not like you're fully memorizing the entirety of however many miles you're going to do that day, 20, 30, 40. You're not memorizing the entirety of every single turn. Yeah, you're not thinking but... like left, left, right, right. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, you're just thinking, okay, generally speaking, I need to make sure that I'm heading mostly in a western direction or mostly in a northern direction. And there's a tricky intersection coming up in about 10 miles. So I should pay attention yeah. for when I see that. And that might be what sticks in your brain is like, oh, I have a 10 mile, not straight shot, but there's no turn off this trail system that is like a hard left or a hard right. And then you're like, okay, so I have about 10 miles and that's when I'm gonna turn. And yeah, as you continue hiking and you do it longer, your brain starts, yeah, as Magpie described, know your pace and then know once you start getting close to that, you kind of get a feeling with it. So with Gaia as well as Avenza, it's it's nicer to do that sometimes. Um, I've actually really enjoyed sometimes not having the full map system, whether it's gut hook or whatever like that, because it, puts you more into that day trail system. It puts you more into like, oh, this is what the creek's called right here. And this is what we're gonna go through as well as, it makes you do more research each day as well as each section. And you're not just stuck on miles, even though we're pushing hard miles, yeah. you're not just stuck on the mentality of miles. It keeps your brain active. It means that you're like making active choices with all of your decisions. And yeah. especially when you're in a more remote area, it's less so with the NCT, but like with the GDT last year, if you're just following a line, you can get really focused on it and just follow the line even if it causes you to make a stupid, unsafe decision. <laughs> Whereas if you're in a section where you might be bushwhacking or you know yeah. going through heavy snow through the cover, GPS route off yeah, the cliff. <laughs> you want to be making active decisions about where you're going and aiming for your endpoint as opposed to just following the line blindly. And that's not something perceivable per se that I think we might have one or two instances running into that on the NCT, but yeah, since it's such a long trail system, you're going to get all varieties, but GDT, PNT, those are extremes of like cliff, bushwhacking. Yeah. We don't know the ground on the NCT. We know that it's a good chunk of road walks, good chunk of bike paths, good chunk of single track, like in the woods, but you're never super out there. Like yeah. you're never 150 miles away from civilization. Like boundary waters, you're going to be far out. Far out. That's probably the biggest... Um, but in 4,600 miles, you're going to go through every type. And 
some days we might have blazes the entirety of the day saying turn here turn here turn here but then we don't know until we get there and that's kind of something you also got to accept with the map systems is you have these maps and you can plan these days and you can do this but some days you might look at your map system and then be like the entire day you might not need to use it again because there's blazes but then some days you're like oh there's only a few turns in here but when it's ground truth it's super tricky so kind of the essence of that is just let the day speak for itself yeah yeah. I mean, that's another thing, too, is a lot of people, when they're first starting out on a through hike are going to try to, like, map out every single town stop, every single resupply. Oh, gosh. Try to get a really, like, minute, granular picture of the entire trail in their head. And that might work for something like a shorter hike where you're going out for a weekend or 10 days. But for these longer trails, what we usually do is break up the trail in our heads into sections and only concern ourselves with the fine detail of the section that we're actually in. Yes. So thinking maybe two or three resupply stops ahead so that we can plan out, you know, where do we want to zero? Uh, is this a good town that we should stop in for a little while? Or are we going to get to a better one soon? But yes. we're not thinking about North Dakota. We're thinking about Vermont and New York right now. And yeah. we're not looking deeply into the minutia of those map systems farther ahead because we'll look at them when we get there. Yeah, so like what's fun, um, right before we started doing this, Magpie and I were joking around, it's like some uh, woman that is following us and some, yeah, so she gave us a shout out and she was talking about some place in either Michigan or Minnesota that she started coming out with all this data about where the trail passes through and where it gets close to this like resort or something that she has a connection in. And it's like funny because she knew more about the map systems in a direct like two mile segment sense than we did when we we're planning the trail system and that's just kind of how it is like if you know that area she's going to know more we know the route it goes through michigan but we don't know each mile until we get close to, to two it, or three yeah. sections out and that's just you can't you can't i mean <laughs> there's there's I'm no sure there are some memory athletes who could keep every detail of the every mile in their head Oh yeah, there's some smart people out there. Some memory athletes, that is what they would be at that point. Yeah, yeah. but that's not us. And no. that's probably not you either. So don't worry about it. Just figure it out when you get there. Yeah. The only thing I will say with mapping and resupply planning is that you do want to look ahead of time and make sure that there is no sort of obligatory um, resupply boxes that you have to mail ahead of time. Because mm -hmm. if you get to that town and then you figure out that there's only like a post office and a church, you're going to be pretty disappointed. Yeah. yeah. And, and with the sections, um, again, we're coming from a place of this is what we do. So like we might do something that might work for us that might not work for people that are planning as a first hike, section hike, whatever it may be. So like as Magpie was talking about, like the sections, um, if we're planning, we have seven days of food, about 200 miles. Um, and then we get into a day and the day is just super zigzaggy. It's not what we perceived on the map to be. It's not well marked. There's tons there's, of like unmarked turnoffs. We don't totally yeah. know where we are or quite how far we've gone over the day. There's yeah. more obstacles. We might only get 20 to 30 miles. I don't see us getting a 20 mile because we're both, in the beginning we might do a few 20s. I don't want to touch on that too anyway. much. Anyway. Anyway, so yeah, if you get into that day and you only can do 30 miles or whatever it may be, that's okay because you still have seven days to average out. We know we can push those miles out on an easier day. So once we get into an easier day, we know, hey, today we could do 30, 35, 40, whatever it may be to make that food last and know we can still get to that next resupply town. Yeah. So you shouldn't also get, unless it works for you, super stuck on, I have to do this amount of miles each Every day. Every single day, yeah. down to the mile, planning yeah. out your campsites in advance. You're just gonna make yourself nuts. Yeah, and even though we're still going for a speed record and we'll still be holding a heavy pace, we're not doing have to do 35 miles this day. Have to do. We're not saying we have to do 35 miles every single day. It's a long trail. It's going to average out depending on the miles we do. We could do. We 20. do less some days, more other days, and in the end, it all washes out. The math ends up being the same. You distilled that way easier. Yeah, and you were about to go on for another paragraph. Yeah, two paragraphs. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else we didn't touch on? I'm gonna check my notes. Um, just kind of the general knowledge with these map systems is like we've planned a lot of trails in the past yeah. and each trail is going to have its unique challenges when planning that trail. And the NCT is, is the length. Um, it's not the wilderness aspect per se, the permit aspect. It's not big either. It's pretty minimal. Yeah. It's pretty minimal. Um, out East, you don't need at all, um, until you start getting out West into the Midwest. 
So that's not a big issue. It's just the length and it's letting your mind be okay with chewing off those segments and not knowing everything to come. And that's a cool thing about through hike too, because you can't always know what's going to come in. Yeah. When one, you, one of the things that I tell people when they're asking me questions about through hiking is don't think about it as a six month hike. Don't think about it as a 4,000 mile hike or whatever. Think about it as a series of three to four day weekend hikes that you're just doing every day. You're yeah. just doing a whole bunch of little sections in a row. You're just doing three days of hiking over and over and over and over again. And that's where the endurance comes in and the planning, but yeah. it's not as intimidating when you break it down into small sections that you can manageably keep in your head and think about. Yeah, like our bodies are going to have to be pretty running efficiently for four months of high mileage days. But if you look at it that way, you're like, wow, I'm already tired. That's overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. if you do it three days, it's like, oh, I can do that. I can get a shower or laundry in three or four days. And it's just taking it as it comes. So that's kind of the planning. Um, I think we've touched on a lot of good pieces with the maps, um, the general knowledge. There's so much that goes into it. It's hard to distill it. I, well, for me, it's just hard to distill any information, but I don't I think there's that much about the maps. I think I think we got it covered. You could go pretty specific into the each section map system, but but that's, that's exactly what we're distilling. telling people not to do. Yeah, but but is to get drill down into the specifics before you even get on trail. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> there, for me, my mind goes in a thousand directions, but Magpie's mind goes in a thousand. But she can actually follow those thought tangents. I'm rambling again. I think we're done. I did want to say one more time. Okay. <laughs> one more time. Northcountrytrail.org. I'll put it down in the description um, for the full interactive map. And then I'll also put in where I found the full downloadable GPX map um, that excludes the Finger Lakes Trail, Buckeye Trail, as well as Superior Hiking Trail and that part of Vermont. And then I'll also put the fastest known time down in there so you can go over. All the links are in the description. That's what he's trying to say. They're all in the description. Check it out. Yeah, I guess that is what I was trying to say. Or, yeah, I think so. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>